gonna do in this problem is take a 10 kilogram block that we've been dealing with, and we're going to lift the block 20 meters. And in this problem, we're gonna go through it, and just like we have been, we're gonna solve for the total work done on the block, as well as the work done by each individual force acting on the block. So in this case, it's pretty simple. We have two forces. We have this pull force upward, and we have gravity downward. Now, in the first version of this problem, or the first case here, what I wanna do is pull upward with a force that is equal to, to the force downward by gravity. So that means we're gonna pull upward with a force of 98 newtons over 20 meters. Ultimately, if the pull force upward equals the force downward, that means this block is not going to accelerate. If you wanna see the mechanics and the math behind that, click up here and take a look at the elevator problem. So in finding the work done on this block, the sum of all works in this case is simply going to be the work done by the pull force plus the work done by gravity. And as always, our equation for work is FD cosine theta. So we're gonna apply this equation to each of these forces. So first we have the pull force. The work by the pull force is going to be 98 times 20 times the cosine of zero. Let's say it's zero or the angle is zero, that's because the force is straight upward and the displacement is straight upward. This gives us a total work of 1,960 joules. Ultimately, this pull force is giving energy to the block. Now, gravity, on the other hand, is pulling just as hard over the same displacement. The catch is gravity is acting downward. So the angle between gravity and the displacement is 180 degrees. This means the work by gravity is going to be negative 1960 joules. Practically what this means is that whatever energy is given to the block by attempting to lift it, gravity takes away, or really gravity turns into some other form of energy, which we'll talk about later when we get to gravitational potential energy. But from start to finish in this problem, we see the pull force does 1,960 joules of work. The work by gravity does negative 1,960 joules of work. So the sum of all works in this problem is going to work out to be zero joules. No work is done on the block, or no net work is done on the block. And what this looks like and how this feeds into things we can actually calculate, we'll deal with later on when we get to something called the work energy theorem. For right now, we're just finding the works done by these individual forces. This will be useful or more useful later on. Now, I wanna change up this problem a little bit. I wanna change this pull force from 98 newtons to 150 newtons. Now we know if we pull harder upward on the block, then gravity is pulling downward, there's gonna be a net force and this block should speed up. Uh, so I wanna go through and look like, at how that translates into work done. So we're ultimately doing the same problem here, except now we have a different pull force upward. But I wanna again work out the total work and the work by each individual force. Again, we're using the same equation. So let's take a look at the pull force first. This time around, we have 150 newtons upward, acting over a displacement of 20 meters upward. And the angle between them again is still zero degrees. We haven't changed the direction of force, just the magnitude. This is gonna result in 3000 joules of work being done upward. Gravity hasn't changed at all. By us changing how hard we're pulling upward on this block, that hasn't affected gravity. So the work by gravity is still gonna be negative 1,960 joules. So the total work in this case is going to be 3,000 minus 1,960 joules. So the total work is 1,040 joules. 
This means the block has gained energy as it moves upward. Now, if we forget about energy for a second, we know that this block is going to speed up as it moves upward. And we'll see later on how work ties into the velocity of an object when we start talking about kinetic energy. And we'll look at how to organize all of this when we get to the work energy theorem. But for now, we're just finding the works by individual forces and the total work done on objects. Which means, that's all for now. Thank you.